Good morning. Welcome to Audubon United Methodist Church. It is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and uh, we are uh, still in uh, the uh, letter to Peter, and uh, chapter 3 this time. And uh, I'm wondering if you want to get your hair cut this week. Think about that. Um, I finally did it. was able to do that, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. But um, it is still Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. And so we should be joyous about that. Um, I will have a few announcements, um, a couple of announcements. I uh, want you still to keep in touch with one another. I hope that you're finding ways of doing that. Uh, some of the restaurants are opening back up again, and you might notice uh, they're a little bit different. It's a little different experience to go in and, uh, to uh, the restaurants you've been at before. And uh, uh, just we're having some new experiences this week, I think. But I hope you're still keeping in touch with one another, or giving each other phone calls, uh, maybe going out to eat lunch in a safe environment, uh, if uh, that's the case this week. Also wanted to uh, uh, bring forth the announcement that we are going to be, Audubon is going to be a two-point charge with Colfax United Methodist Church, which is about 20 minutes uh, west of here. And that's going to begin on July 1st, 2020, and uh, any changes in worship times will, will be to be announced. Right now, uh, Colfax is worshiping at 10 a.m. and Otterbein at 10.30 a.m., so we'll have to change that around a bit, but I'll keep you informed, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, see what uh, happens. Uh, that will begin on July 1st this year. So uh, those are the announcements, and uh, I will go and... Uh, Light the candles for us. Um, I want to remind you that the two candles represent Christ with us. And uh, there are two because uh, Christ is both human and divine. That's why there are two candles. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the city of Lebanon, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, or through outer space, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the aged and the infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Defend us, deliver us, in your compassion protect us, O Lord, by your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in this silence, may you offer up to the Lord the things that are in your own heart. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll be singing the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul.
Our scripture today comes from 1 Peter, the first letter of Peter, chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He has put to death in the flesh, he was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as I asked earlier, how many of you have gone out this week to get your hair cut? The salons opened this week, and um, I tried to go on Monday, but um, it was a 133-minute wait. <laughs> and uh, so I, I couldn't get it done before our charge conference that evening. So I finally got it done on Friday. I got my hair cut. But, uh, the waiting was about two hours every day this week. So uh, if you didn't get your hair cut, maybe you'll want to this coming week, or maybe you're just fine as you are. But um, there's something about getting your hair cut that makes you feel better. It lifts your spirits. I mean, getting an ounce of hair cut off of your head is sort of like, um, makes you feel 10 pounds lighter. I wish that. But uh, it makes you feel like you're 10 pounds lighter, doesn't it? It makes you feel better. Did you know that there are places that charge $300 just to get a blow dry? A blow dry in the style of your hair? No perm, no color, no haircut. I'm not even sure if they wash your hair. Maybe they just spray your hair with one of those spray bottles and blow, blow dry it in style. But $300, can you imagine that? $300 for it. I know how it feels to present your best face to the world, but I imagine these folks who are used to paying $300 just to have their hair blow dry, um, it was, they were sort of out of sorts having somebody from their household give them a trim during their sheltering in place, I imagine. Sometimes our culture puts too much emphasis on the outward appearance. Is that an understatement or am I being too harsh? We are good at cleaning up the outside but we often neglect the inside. Well, we do neglect our health too. That's part of our insides, our healthy insides. But I'm talking about our spiritual insides. I'm talking about our heart and soul. In our scripture today, Peter says that baptism is not as the removal of dirt from the body but as an appeal to God for a good conscience. A good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I wonder sometimes if what baptism means to us is just to make, an, make our outside selves, our public selves, presentable to the world. It's all about appearance, about appearance, no substance. Yet God does not want so much to clean us up on the outside 
as to clean us up on the inside. Just as with our physical health, most of the time, if the inside of our body is healthy, then, then the outside of our body is going to appear healthy. When our inside disposition is clean, then our outside actions will be pure. One follows the other. We are pretty good, however, at cleaning ourselves up on the outside, but what are we hiding on the inside where no one else can see us? Are we hiding bitterness, envy, despair, fear, contempt, jealousy, greed? If you want your heart cleansed, if you want to be saved from the things that eat at your heart, things that eat at your soul, then acknowledge the gift of Jesus' resurrection, the gift that Jesus' resurrection has given to us. And make ourselves, we need to make ourselves available to the fountain of grace that is our God. Let him clean you up. Clean you up on the inside and give you a clear and a good conscience. He wants us to be presentable. He wants to present us blameless, blameless before the throne of God. Are you willing to let him do that? Of course, you don't go to the barber shop until you look in the mirror and find yourself looking like Bozo the Clown or Tom Hanks in that castaway movie. Remember his long curly hair when he'd been on that island for so long? The same is true of our heart, our heart and our soul. We must first recognize the condition that we are in. We need to recognize that condition before we let the stylist of our souls mess with us. We, we need to become aware of our realistic condition. We need to become aware of our need, our need to be cleaned up to be cleaned up on the inside. The scribes and the Pharisees were not willing to recognize this. Listen to what Jesus says to them in Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 to 27. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside you are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee first clean the inside of the cup so that the outside may be clean. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which on the outside look beautiful, but inside they are full of bones of the dead and all kinds of filth. So you also, on the outside, look righteous to others, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. It isn't that Jesus considered the scribes and Pharisees beyond redemption. He didn't didn't consider them beyond redemption and therefore was condemnation. I don't think that's what he was doing. It was just that they were unwilling. They were unwilling to see their situation. And they were unwilling to repent. If only they had been willing. You may have known someone like this. You may have been someone like this. Have you ever known pretenders? Have you met any pretenders in your life? 
I've known some professional women to be pretenders. Maybe men are too, but in different ways. Women present themselves a particular way because they believe that their success is dependent on it. Never let your guard down. Never let them see you squirm. They know how to play the game, these women do. But their smile and their laughter hide a deep sense of insecurity. They appear well-adjusted, but they are dying on the inside. If they would only turn to God, they would find the courage, the courage to be authentic, to live a life, to live an authentic life, to be who you are without fear. That's what God can help us do. Have, have you confessed your condition? Or if you have not, have you asked God to reveal to you your genuine condition, the genuine condition of your heart and soul? Are you able to face who you truly are right now? And are you able to come to the living waters to be cleansed, to be renewed, to be restored? If we do come to those waters, we will receive a clear conscience. We won't be merely pretending that our conscience is clear. It really will be clear. This reminds me of a Walking Dead episode. Ken and I have been Walking Dead fans since the very beginning, and we still watch the show. There is a character named Morgan Jones. Morgan had failed. He had failed to follow through with something that would have been very painful for him to do had he done it. But as a result of not following through, his son, Dwayne, lost his life. We learn this in an episode further down the road, after Morgan, after we had initially met Morgan in, and his son in the very first episode of the show. When we encounter him again, Morgan, he is holed up in the top floor of a building, all alone and protected by an arsenal of booby traps. All over the walls inside this building where he's living is the word clear, 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 in all different sizes and shapes everywhere, all over the walls. Morgan struggled with some deep pain because of his failure. He struggled with justly parsing out the blame someplace, and he struggled with forgiving himself. I believe he was asking if his conscience was clear. He would ask, am I clear? If he met somebody, he would say, are you clear? Most of us have deep hurts which have either been done to us or we have done to others or both. Sometimes the hurts we cause, we are not even aware we are causing them. I often say that if we have never been hurt, we simply haven't lived long enough. The first thing we receive when we come to the waters, the living waters that are our God, the first thing we receive is forgiveness. Forgiveness, I have read, is the sweet smell of violet sheds 
on the heel that has crushed it. When we come to the waters, our past does not disappear, but its power over us to destroy us, to destroy our present and our future, that can be eliminated. We can face life now with a clear conscience. Have you stood under those cleansing waters and received forgiveness? Yet it is not the intention of God to forgive our sins, wash away our dirt, and do nothing else. God is in the business of total restoration. When he says he's going to clean us up, it is more, it is more than a quick ride through the car wash. In fact, if we are like cars, God is quite the tinkering mechanic, actually, but he's a tinkering mechanic with gentle fingers. His intentions are for our good and for our beauty. Yet, if we were cars, we would be saying, you don't need to do all that. Just change my spark plugs and my oil. Rotate my tires. Change the battery if it needs it. Sure, I have a few leaks, but pour some bars leak in there and I'll be just fine. Just keep me running, we'll say. Keep me running, that's all I ask. But God has higher intentions. And before we know it, we are up on four jack stands, stripped down to our engine block, feeling very exposed. Do you know what I'm talking about here? God has some deep cleansing to do. And it is uncomfortable sometimes. And it's painful to have our hurts exposed and to be tinkered with. Yet in 1 Peter, we are reminded that Jesus suffered too. And Peter asserts that if we are to suffer, isn't it better to suffer for good than for evil? Of course, the process is uncomfortable or even painful, but the end result is beautiful. And who we were always meant to be. Just look around. Look around at our brand new exhaust system, we might think. Jesus said that it was not what goes into a person that defiles, but what comes out, hence the exhaust system. what comes out of the heart. Before, before what came out of the heart was greed and deceit and envy and slander and pride and vengeance and self-absorption. Those were the kinds of exhausts that came out. After God's overhaul, we emit love, joy, peace, Patience, goodness, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Jesus' resurrection conquered sin and death. Jesus' body was transformed at the resurrection because his Father resurrected Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can come to the waters of baptism which is a sign, a sign that we can come to the throne of grace and appeal to God 
for a good and clear conscience. God is faithful. He will give us the pretense of goodness. He will not give us the pretense of goodness and clarity. With patience, he works with us until our clear conscience is real. No pretending. Are you willing to recognize your inner self needs work? Am I willing to recognize that too? Are we willing to come to God and experience forgiveness, no matter how grave or minor our sin? Are we willing to come to God today to have our inner self cleansed and restored? The process might not be pleasant, but the result the results are strikingly beautiful. Let us pray. Dear Lord, there are so many things that come in and try to eat away at our souls and our hearts. Bitterness and contempt and fear and greed. All of these things come in. We want you to come in and cleanse our hearts. Give us a clear conscience. Give us the ability to live life unafraid. Live life authentically as the people we truly are, the ones we were meant to be. Come and cleanse our hearts and make us who we were created to be. In Jesus' name. And now I uh, want to make you aware uh, that even though we don't have offering plates, uh, we still receive offerings. We just receive them in the mail. And we'll sing the uh, doxology. <laughs> Thank you. 
Go out into your world, living authentic lives. And if there are things eating at your soul, go to God. He will help you with that. And he will cleanse your soul so that you can live an authentic life.